Hey guys, Alex from Signature Solar here. This is Richard from EG4 Electronics, and they just uh, released a new inverter, so he's here to explain how it works and what to expect from it. Thank you, Alex. Hey everybody, I'm happy to be here and excited to show you guys all this new inverter that we've rolled out. I'm gonna go ahead and go through a quick demo with everybody, so let's go ahead and take a look. Hello everyone, Richard from EG4 Electronics here, and today I'm excited to show you guys our new inverter. This is the 3000 EHV-48, and this is an inverter by EG4 Electronics. This is a three kilowatt inverter that allows you to input up to 5,000 watts of solar. And I was gonna do a quick demo with you guys showing you how to set it up, what you can expect when you're using it, some of the functions and the features of this. When you're looking at the front, you do have the screen and then four buttons. You've got escape, up, down, and enter. And I'll show you how to use those in a second here. From the top, you've got your AC in, your AC out, as well as your PV input. And then to the right, you do have a section for the battery to be connected as well with a couple holes to use and screw that in. I'll go ahead and show you guys the bottom here. There's a few buttons that you can take a look at. From the upper left here, you've got an RS-232, uh, an RS-485, and those are for communications. One is for communicating to the battery. The other is commuting, uh, communicating to the Wi-Fi stick that we include with this. To the right of that, we've got a uh, section for your generator to be connected to automatically turn on or off depending on whether you have normally closed or normally open uh, the on off switch we do have a circuit breaker if it goes off inside the machine you can push to reset the uh, circuit breaker a grounding screw and on the left you can't really see it there's a section to connect the inverter to inverter communications as well I really like the design on this. It's got a really good color scheme and it looks really nice. And they've made it really easy to go ahead and take a look from the top, how to connect everything. So the first thing I'd like to do is go ahead and I'm gonna turn on the solar here. We have a solar array coming in onto the first of the two inverters here. The first one, when this comes up, you're gonna see a flashing BP on the screen. That just indicates that the battery is not connected to the inverter, but it is in standby mode automatically when it first kicks on. And what we'll do is, one of the really cool features about this inverter is you can take solar, directly put it out into a load. So I've got a couple of space heaters here that I was gonna turn on for you guys. So right now it's in standby mode. I'm gonna flip it into the on position and you'll hear it kick on here. And on the screen, you'll notice that immediately the solar panel connection goes from nothing over to a load indicator on the right hand side of the screen. So I've got solar panels connected to the first inverter here. Um, I've got them turned on here so you can take a look. These are, it's a small array that we have outside. It's about 150, 160 volts and about 70 or 80 amps. So not a ton but it's just enough where I can actually straight from the solar, I can actually turn on one of these space heaters and you can see that the solar panels without any extra input are running um, one of the space heaters here. Now, if you do uh, have a load that's too large for your solar panels, so if I turn this up on the screen here, you'll see that it turns black and you're gonna get an error message of 15 and that indicates that it's over the uh, PV input, that there's not enough PV input in order to run your load. From there, I'm gonna come around and I'll show you guys, you can actually run this at the same time as it's connected to solar, you can connect it to AC power. So let me go ahead and plug this in for you. And you'll hear an, a little hum when that turns on. You also see on the screen an indicator of AC that it's plugged in and you can see the entire inputs on this device. And now that it's gone and connected to AC, you'll see another line appear on the screen that indicates that it's in bypass mode. 
So while it's in bypass mode, depending on the settings you select, it'll either use the solar energy, the AC, or your battery for your first power source and output from you know whichever option you choose. But they all work in conjunction with each other. Uh, it's not going to have an issue if you plug one in or unplug one on the fly. Depending on your settings, it's gonna react differently. So right now I've got the AC plugged in and the solar. On the screen, I can see that both the solar panels and the AC are uh, connected to my load. And the setting that I have it in currently is gonna try and run off the panels first. However, when I turn this on to a higher setting, we're gonna see that it's run without shutting down because it's got the AC input. It's using the solar panels as well. And I've got two of them here. And what I can do is I'll actually turn them both on just so you can see. These are 1500 watt space heaters. And this is a 3000 watt inverter. So if I turn this one on, and turn it on one of the higher settings here. Now what I can do is I can actually look on the screen here and it's gonna give me the voltage and everything else. Using the up and down keys, I can cycle through those and see exactly what my load is, what my current output is. So with both of these running, I'm sitting at about 74% of the load. So like I said, these are 1500 watts each. This is a 3000 watt. So after it goes through a startup phase, they're running at about 74% of the maximum output of this. If something were to happen, let's say you had the system set up in the middle of the night and the power went out, the system automatically shuts down. It knows that the load is too much for what it's generating with solar. And it'll go through a startup process here and you'll get an error message on the screen, 15, which indicates that the load is too large for the PV that's being generated. So, but at any time you can just come back in and as soon as the power kicks on, you'll see it just turned off again. But as soon as the power comes back on for the AC, on my screen, I've got both indicators for the solar panels and the AC. And in just a moment when the inverter kicks on, we'll see that these turn back on as well. It normally takes a second to start up. So, and now we're in bypass mode again. It's started up and both of my heaters are on again. So, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off for a moment. And so the last thing I need to show you guys is the battery connection. So we've got down here, we've got a, a cable that's connected to the DC input on the inverter. And down here, I've got one of the EG4 batteries that's already turned on. I've just had it disconnected because of the breaker here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. So at this point, the inverter can see all three different types of input. So you're gonna have battery, you're gonna have AC input, and you're also gonna have the solar panels. And at any time, again, if any of these turn off, it doesn't affect the operation as long as there's enough power to run whatever the load is. Right now there's no load, so it's not really doing anything. But on the screen, I've got a setup where you can see that the battery is actually running the load currently. And if I turn on the solar panels again, I'll get the indicator on the screen. And the way that it's working now is I can actually see that the solar, because these are off, it says that it's enough of a uh, charge to be able to run your load and charge the batteries at the same time. So the, the indicator on the screen, I see one arrow going across to the load and another arrow going across to the batteries. Now, let's say somebody was getting cold and they wanted to turn one of these up to a higher setting. Immediately I see on the screen, and I can tell that this is running, that the uh, battery is actually supplying additional electricity to the inverter. So it, it, it knows exactly what it's doing in both of those situations. So, and finally, if something happened, you know, if something were to happen overnight and the AC went out, just seamlessly, it's simply using just the batteries and the uh, solar at this point to run the load.
Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by and enjoying the demonstration from EG4 Electronics. If you did enjoy, if you don't mind taking a moment to like and subscribe, we'll see you on the next video.